Okay, so I did, well, I, like, it wasn't just me. Like, I also did it with Ben Mangrove. I'm like, this is, anyways. So, yeah, refraction, like, it was similar to Jenny's, like, refraction and the index of refraction. So, is this not like, how do I get to do that? Okay. So, basically, we had these two, we had, like, a, like, a plate of glass and a plate of acrylic, and we wanted to figure out what, like, what the relationship between the two indices of refraction would be. And so we had the glass plate and the acrylic plate, and then I can, just, I can talk more about that in the um, procedure. So we had, okay, so we had like the plate of whatever we were using, like the glass or the acrylic, and then we like drew these horizontal lines, like we would draw one here too, so we could like slide it across if we wanted. And we would put a pin right here, and then we had a protractor, and we would put another pin out there and measure the angle, how far away it was from like normal here. And then we would like get down, we go over here and like sit down on the ground and like look straight at it and figure out where it looked like the pin was coming out and then where it looked like you would like see them lining up. And I have like pictures of what that looks like too. Um, and then we would draw that line with the ruler and measure like that angle and stuff, which I can show more about later. So the like basis of the lab is um, Snell's Law, which is that like, if you have like, there's like, you can't really see it, there's a line here for the different materials, and you have a ray of light coming in, when it go, it when it enters like a, like denser material, it um, goes at a different, it goes like at a different angle, and so there's a relationship between these two angles, which is um, this that the index of n is the index of refraction times the sine of the first angle is the same as the index of refraction times the sine of the second. So, or it's two different index of indices of refraction for the first channel and same material. And so we put it on a sheet, we put it on a sheet of paper like I said, and that's pretty much, I already said that stuff. Ooh. Um, oh, okay, yeah, so um, that this is like an example, this is some, some of our data for the plate of glass, so this is like where the glass was on the piece of paper, and so we would, we had a pin here and a pin here, and then we would come and look and we would say that it looked like it was coming out there and that was like the sight line to our eye to figure out where that was. And so we would measure the angles that it would come in and go out and then go out and come in, I don't know. And then um, we found like the average of these two angles and called it like the, in, uh, the angle of refraction. We found the average of these two angles called it like the angle of incidence. We did that eight times for each material, just like that. And so this was the, the graph for um, the glass and the slope is, so this is the sign of the index of refraction and this is the sign of the angle of incidence. So the angle, or the slope is the index of refraction because of the relationship between the two things and the index of refraction for air is zero. So, or one I mean, I meant one, sorry. And then that's just the same graph for the acrylic. So, um, it might have been, so like the first time we did it, like the first few times we were doing it, the sidelines were like not super accurate. And so it could, like we tried, we think like probably got better at them, but like they might not have been perfect exactly with what it looked like. And we could have gotten um, the protractor wrong. So for our error calculations, so the um, index of refraction of glass is in between 1.50 or 1.50 and 1.54. And the value that we got was from our slope was 1.535, which fits in the range. So it was like not wrong. And so the acrylic was not in the range. So the experimental value we got was 1.037, and we had a range of 1.490 to 1.492. So we just used the um, smaller one, the smaller part, like part of the range, because we were like too low. And so the absolute error and, or the relative error were like 30% wrong on that one, so that was a little more wrong. Um, so basically, um, the light, or the, the lines that were through the material, like every line that was through the same material looked to be parallel to all the other lines, I think is what I'm saying. And then, here I can go back. So basically like, these lines all look pretty parallel to each other and like these two lines look parallel to each other and these two look parallel to like each other and like these two and like that kind of thing. So just, we were just kind of thinking that the light travels the same way through the same material. And um, so, oh, and we said that the ratio of the angle of incidence and refraction were the same because, which was 
this is basically just saying that Snell's law was right, and that's good. Um, and our hypothesis was wrong because we thought that the um, index of refraction for acrylic was going to be higher, but it was actually lower. So I think that's it. Oh, no, there's more. So, oh yeah, so I guess something that could perfectly cite the pins would be pretty cool and make a better and more accurate experiment. And, um, oh, and it was also like on the edge of the glass, it was kind of like bumpy and a little hard to see. And so having something that was not quite so bumpy would probably be better. Thank you. <laughs> Questions for Newton? Cool, thanks.